We Xennials, uh, along with our close cousins in the Gen X and Millennial generations, have long been wary of the impending AI apocalypse. We were raised on stories about how artificial intelligence grew beyond the control of its makers and either decided humanity is a problem that must be eliminated or put us into a techno hell based on some misguided attempt to protect us. I mean, come on, I can think of two blockbuster movies from the 90s that specifically warned about the potential dangers of AI. We got these lessons from the Terminator franchise first, but the original Matrix movie was also chocked full of warnings about where a real artificial general intelligence could lead humanity. But despite these warnings and our own existential dread about the advent of AI in 2024, we are staring down the barrel of a world where AI replaces us and the purpose of humanity will quickly come into question. But what no one wants to be honest about is the fact that if we continue down this path, AI will replace you. In this video, we'll discuss what AI is and contextualize our current known technological advancement to better understand what we're facing today and in our potential future. After that, I'll explain how AI is actively making your life and everyone else's worse right now. In the third section of this video, I'll explain why AI will replace you and in what ways it will do that. Now, I'm not going to spout all this terrifying and gloomy information without capping it with a bit of hope, so don't leave until after the conclusion. Really quickly, before we start the video, I make these videos out of my own desire to share philosophical views from the standpoint of Xennials. Not only do I not make anything off of these, but they cost me both time and money to make. So if you enjoy or appreciate all my hard work, please consider giving the Xennial Philosopher a like, subscribe, and comment so a larger audience can see these important messages. Now, let's talk about how artificial intelligence is designed to replace you. Part 1. What is AI and how far along are we? Artificial intelligence is everywhere right now. Unless you've been living under a rock for the last couple of years, you've seen newer, more advanced AI large language models being regularly introduced. At the same time, you've seen countless articles, papers, and essays about AI models' benefits and detriments. But with all the press releases and people screaming from soapboxes, arguing both for and against the proliferation of AI, it's tough to understand what AI in early 2024 really is. So in this section, I'll do my best to break down what AI is today. I'd like to begin with a dictionary definition before we dive into the finer points, so let's get that out of the way first. Good old Merriam-Webster defines artificial intelligence as the capability of computer systems or algorithms to imitate intelligent human behavior. There's also a second definition for AI, and as usual, it fits well with the first one. A branch of computer science dealing with the simulation of intelligent behavior in computers. I don't know about you, but I see a common theme here that not many people mention among the copious media about AI. Both of these definitions have key words that mean a lot. The first said to imitate intelligent human behavior, while the second said simulation of intelligent behavior. Do you hear it? Simulating and imitating is not the same thing as recreating or replicating. These definitions leave a massive hole where a planet could fit. The planet-sized hole these definitions leave uncovered is that the thing we think of as AI today is not precisely a replication or recreation of human intelligence. It's an imitation 
Now, if you've watched my channel's other videos or have interacted with the world at large, you'll know that even imitating human nature has a lot of potential pitfalls. Still, the critical thing here is that AI is not intelligent like a person or even a dog. It is intelligent like a fast computer. It uses complex branching decision trees to figure out how to respond in a manner like a human. So we don't have some artificial general intelligence, at least not that we know about, that is faster, smarter, and better than any human or anything. We instead have a bunch of highly specialized artificial intelligences trained to be particularly good at one thing. These specialized AIs are getting scary good at all kinds of skills and even at being creative, and they are only getting better by the day. So AI is powerful, is good at a lot of things that humans make their living doing, and gets better with each passing second. But we don't have anything but imitations of human intellect yet. Unfortunately for all of us, we don't need to have an AGI for AI to start changing and even ruining your life right now. And that's precisely what the next section of this video is all about. Part two, how AI is ruining your life. In the first section, we established that what people call AI today isn't really intelligent and not really much more than a mimic of human smarts. But even this relative to science fiction rudimentary AI can and does have a major impact on your life today. Here are a few examples. AI can replace you at work. AI might take control of your finances. AI can fill the world with misinformation both unintentionally and maliciously. AI can hide things and find things. AI can invent things or make things better. AI can take your order and make your food. It can do your shopping. If Microsoft and OpenAI are to be believed, AI will make your life easier. If philosophers are to be believed, AI will destroy humanity. Now, I'm not even sure you believe those things. I mean, that list sounds like a few theories mixed with a few realities. But I'm here to tell you that I am not making this up. This is not some theoretical future we need to avoid. This is now, today. How is AI changing your life right now? For example, while it isn't easy to pin down the exact number of formerly human jobs that AI replacements have supplanted, we do have some actual statistics from the last couple of years. For example, half of all businesses have integrated AI into their operations. Taking this a step further, officially in 2023, 14% of workers were reported to have had job displacement precisely because of AI. But this number, like most these days, was skewed by the pandemic in 2020 because it also appears that about 42% of jobs lost during COVID-19 lockdowns were never restored because AI could take over many of those roles. These are just some of the statistics on jobs and AI in 2024, but we can't stop there. AI is also making massive inroads into creative pursuits. Now, I don't know about you, but I was initially in favor of the AI robot takeover because I assumed they'd be particularly good at the boring stuff like inventory and making widgets. Like many of my peers, I mistakenly thought that as long as I established myself as a creative within my field, I'd be safe. But as we see with viral tools like ChatGPT and Dolly, creativity, or at least some close simulacrum to it, happens to be the bread and butter of these new AI systems. This has led to film and television strikes to ensure AI doesn't replace them, has led to authors expressing concern about AI, and it's already created such an overabundance of nearly useless content that the dead internet theory is quickly becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. 
Artificial intelligence is actively ruining the world around us as I write this and as you watch this. Thousands of AI-generated videos are being put online to bury the good stuff, like my videos. AI is helping companies increase efficiency to unprecedented levels, which is corporate speak for they're making more money than ever by screwing over everyone else that much more effectively. The truth of the matter is I probably need to do deep dives on each section of this video because I could go on for a long time about how AI is, at this very moment, actively making your life worse. Still, you and I don't have all day, so let's move on to why it is that AI will replace you. Part 3. Why AI Will Replace You I did my best to make sure you understood what we call AI is not truly intelligent. Then I told you a bunch of the ways that AI is actively making your life worse at this very moment. But there's an even bigger worry that not enough people are talking about. AI replacing you. Now, I'm not saying AI is going to overtake your conscious mind. At least I hope we have time before that happens. But AI is already hoping to replace you at your job, replace your need to grocery shop, and even replace your need to write or even speak. You see, running a large language model is not a free endeavor. These companies that are giving you access to their AI so you can do internet searches or get help writing emails and documents, are not doing this out of the goodness of their hearts. In fact, I can guarantee that no corporation, despite its legal status as a person, has a heart, let alone any altruism or even innate goodness. The only goal of the AI makers is to become filthy rich while gathering as much power as they possibly can. This is where I remind you that there is nothing for free. You're paying for AI to write your email or order your pizza. You're just paying with something less tangible than money, something that you can't regain. So why are these AI tools free and why are they everywhere and why should you care? The answer to the first two should explain why you should care. You see, these tools are free because the makers cannot make them. They have to train them. And while they can train them to a point, there's only so much existing data that's useful. You get access for free because every minute you spend feeding their AI prompts is just further training the large language model so that it can eventually replace you. The more AI learns, the less you'll need to do, and the more you let AI programs do for you, the less you're in control of your choices. AI can be used not only to track consumer behavior, which has been the holy grail of companies in the last 30 years, with absolute accuracy, but AI can also guide, mold, and shift consumer behavior as soon as the consumers let AI take over any aspect of their lives. You're already letting AI run much of your life. It has replaced a lot of your decision-making with its curated suggestions. If you use a smart thermostat, one that learns, then you are letting that AI control the HVAC in your home, allowing it to decide when to run the heat or not. Do you use Waze or Google Maps? Do you scroll any social media feeds? Do you watch streaming television? Do you shop online? Do you see ads on your phone, computer, or TV? If you answered in the affirmative for any of these or probably like 2,000 other questions I could have asked, then AI is already replacing you. AI is replacing your curiosity, your decision-making, and your senses until it can get the reaction it wants out of you. Whether that reaction is to spend more time on the social media website, or the choice is to buy something from Amazon, or even what you should watch when you finally get some long-awaited downtime. No matter what you think you're choosing, 
There's a strong chance an AI, or what passes for AI in 2024, is manipulating and guiding you to choose what is most advantageous to the owners, or whoever paid the owners, of that AI. So you see, AI has replaced you in a lot of ways. Those who are championing its rise want it to replace you in every possible way. Because the more of your life that you seed over to an unfeeling machine with interests of its own, the more of your life can be controlled to make you maximally profitable to the machine's owners. Now that was dark, but true. And something we all need to be not just thinking about, but doing something about. And that is precisely what we'll cover in the conclusion before we wrap this video up. Conclusion, what can we do? Hey, thanks for getting this far. That is exceedingly rare. You stuck with me through a breakdown of what artificial intelligence is, and you also patiently listened to me explaining why AI is making your life worse today. And finally, you even sat through the most worrying and gloomy part about how AI will replace you. Now, as I typically like to do at the conclusion of these videos, I will try and leave you with some information about how we can use AI to make our lives better and what we all need to be doing to avoid that dark future like Terminator and The Matrix showed us back in the 90s. For starters, there are plenty of ways the current iteration of AI can be helpful to you in daily life. For example, a smart thermostat will use machine learning to help you heat and cool your home more efficiently and effectively. There are also AI algorithms at work in your online shopping, helping you keep your home stocked. There is AI helping scientists sift through data sets that would take humans decades to sift through to find new solutions to all kinds of humanity's problems. But if you stop, for just a moment and look past all the hype AI brings to the world today, you might notice something fishy. We all have clear and relatively precise worries about how AI could ruin the world. However, if you look, you'll find that most of the proponents of unfettered AI advancement sound like religious leaders or cult members in their blind devotion to the potential of this tech. Some of the most zealous of the AI cultists who call their group effective accelerationism or just EX have even made a manifesto and a website where they say this insane thing in one of their blog posts. They said, and I quote, we have no affinity for biological humans or even the human mind structure. We are post-humanists in the sense that we recognize the supremacy of higher forms of free energy accumulation over lesser forms of free energy accumulation. We aim to accelerate this process to preserve the light of techno-capital. I don't know about you, but that is a terrifying and unhinged view of this technology. And if we allow groups like this to help usher us into the bold new future, we are screwed. That statement by the EX is horrific. And even though these are also supposedly humans, they openly disdain us as people and are openly looking to replace humanity all while enriching themselves. Now, all of that was to bring me to the other way that we can ensure our and our ancestors' future is not a science fiction hellscape. Those of us who are worried and want to see careful, thoughtful control and regulation around this powerful tech need to make our voices heard. How can you, a simple, non-famous, non-rich person, do anything? Well, we could start by not supporting reckless companies and by voting for laws and politicians that seek to ensure that we don't get wiped out by the next Zuckerberg or Musk creation. And finally, by continuing to be the best possible person you can be, we can collectively show the world 
that the world doesn't have to be a terrible, scary place where the apocalypse is always just around the corner. We can be hopeful and make a world where hope matters most. Hey, okay, really quick before you go, you made it this far, and I hope that means you like my videos and the messages that I'm trying to convey. If that's the case, in addition to liking and subscribing to help spread the message, consider leaving a comment or sharing this video with someone you know would enjoy it. Regardless, if you hear this part of the video, you are one of less than 30% of Xenial Philosopher viewers that make it this far. And for that, I want to give you my most sincere thanks, and I hope you'll come back for more soon.